which kind of leads and continues to, from a constitutional perspective, keep the African or black people in this enslaved kind of Pastor, we can't hear a question, so we can you repeat it, please? Uh, well, yeah, she, she's speaking about three-fifths human being doctrine in the Constitution, uh, which has to do with African-Americans being considered property, and, you know, that's certain, certainly what she is suggesting to us, or what she, I hear her saying, and you can correct me, that uh, this only adds to the problem, it's had added to the problem over time, if you begin by saying that the Africans are not fully human beings. You know, it's an interesting thing to me that African people could not be considered full human beings, and yet um, those people without souls, those women without souls, could be taken to the master's bed and impregnated and given children and all that kind of stuff, but yet not be considered fully human. That's amazing to me. That's called placating your Okay. You want to say more about that? Having your cake and eating it too. Right. <laughs> you ain't humans, but hey. And I'm not responsible. But the thing that occurs to me is in this doctrine of us being two thirds, three fifths human, whatever, mm -hmm. seems that at that point there were probably more slaves in this country than there were Caucasians. And consequently, if they had been counted as fully human, who, who wins the election? It's about control, economic control, and domination. And what the sister back here asked earlier about a different interpretation of scripture, which might lead us to a greater oneness, I have found that in this thing called New Age thinking, metaphysics, in which we say these stories that we were taught have are allegories, parables, stories told to prove a point. And when you go beneath the point, when you get you a good dictionary and you start looking up these words, you come up with an inter a different interpretation. And so then every man and woman can go to God and say, what's in it for me? There's another, there's another thing that goes with those stories that, that a lot of people resist, and it's this, it's myths. People resist that because a lot of people, when they get myths, they get lies or stories that, that you know, aren't true. Uh, when in reality, uh, I think that Joseph Calvary does a lot of with, with that. Uh, we learn that this is how people are taught through stories. Uh, if you, if you, that's the easiest way for people to learn. People may resist telling the story, but it's the best way uh, for it to happen. It's the best way to pass on uh, untruths to people as well as truths to people. Uh, so you can make people feel good about themselves, you can make people feel bad about themselves. Part of the problem is in America is that uh, in being America that every some, we sometimes get to this point where we think everybody is supposed to be the same. Everybody's not going to be the same. We we do come from different places. There you know there's some people that actually actually disdain the idea that Africans have something worthy to give to the world. This came up just a few days ago in one of the uh, doing the, uh, this convention that they have in, uh, um, yeah, I think that's one. They, they, in this convention that they have, there was actually a, I believe it was a senator, who actually argued the idea that Africans had nothing to contribute to society. How asinine. But, you know, these things. Yes. Oh. So in in uh, looking at in the issues that we're having within the last time mm -hmm. with um, just across the board, mm -hmm. how do you see the black church and its its role in that? You know, it's an interesting time. It's 
very interesting time because again, we are different people. I, I, I uh, just again, I think it's, I've been kind of watching that a little bit of the convention here and there, and uh, we had an incident the other night where in a benediction uh, where uh, you know everybody has their right to their own political thinking like that, but sometimes I think it pushes the envelope a little bit far. Um, where uh, we want to we want to uh, make folk our enemies when they don't have to be. Um, um, it's an interesting time because we have we don't always have the um, interest in challenging the uh, injustices in the land. We would rather say and pray and leave it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it was similar to that in Dr. King's day because you do know that America's evangelist, and I'm speaking now of Billy Graham, mm -hmm. certainly lived during the time of Dr. King. In fact, he knew Dr. King. And he was very quiet on the issue of civil rights. And, you know, it said that he would sometimes go amongst his uh, peers and talk to them privately about these issues, but he outwardly, openly, he frequently talked about the need of salvation rather than the need of integration or, you know, anything having to do with that. Let me, let me say this, something else about that. Also, Dr. Graham, Billy Graham, who many of you know who he is, uh, was at one time a staunch uh, revivalist evangelical who believed wholeheartedly that if you did not believe as he believed, that you were on your way to a burning hell. Since then, Billy Graham has recanted and changed his thinking about that. The interesting thing about it, he has a son by the name of Franklin Graham, who is old school. In other words, he's old known to this idea that if you don't think like he thinks, if your religion is not like his religion, that again, you're about to you know, burn up. So it's an interesting time, and, 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 and what I would, if I had my way, what I would like to see is this. I would like to see more educated clergy. Because for a lot of people, you know, they get a call or they get a feeling or they get something and they get into religion. I think everybody that gets into, everybody that's going to be a Christian uh, professor or Christian pastor, they ought to go to school. They ought to go to seminary. They ought to learn something. Because otherwise, they tend to read the wrong books. And when they read those books, they carry it over the congregation. Mm -hmm. And they uh, obviously like this mess with people up. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, do you think there's uh, a, some sort of significant difference between the, the kind of stories or the people that are identified with the facets of God that, that are preached about in white churches versus black churches? You know, black people preach more about justice or corporate sin versus white people don't focus on that as much. Or, um, how do you see that? Well, again, I think it depends upon the exposure. I think that, that a lot of times African American churches do not get close to anything they consider political. Uh, the main tendency tends to be evangelical. Uh, and I wish it was not always that way. I would like to see it uh, um, change. I think that there's, um, in, within the stories, you know, there are, there are virtually, I suspect, a lot more Africans in the scripture than, than anybody here thinks that they are. Uh, that's because they don't realize that Egypt and Ethiopia are actually countries on the continent of Africa. And uh, if they realize that, that they, it might be even liberating to them. Amongst, certainly amongst African American people, I think it become a lot more liberating uh, rather than they get trapped in some of the conversations that, that we have. Um, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but I hope I'm in the ballpark. We, we, we need, again, 
this is my call. I, I think we need more, more educated clergy and not necessarily, you know, it's kind of hard to teach yourself. You really need somebody to kind of help you with that every once in a while. Yes, ma'am. Dr. King shook up the black church first. Because he came with this revolutionary uh, social justice mm -hmm. message mm -hmm. as opposed to evangelical. Yes, ma'am. And the black church had to get used to that and then it spread out, so to speak, into the community and caused other churches, other denominations to begin to look at themselves and to speak on the, those subjects. Well, I'd like to see a lot more of that. You know, I, 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 I hear you and, and I recognize that that happens, but I'd like to see a lot more of that. Well, what I'm getting ready to say is, not this administration, but the previous presidential administration has sent out some bulletins to certain churches. And the, the words in between the lines was, be careful what you're preaching. Now, I was quite frightened because you're overstepping that bound that we always talk about between church and state. But there was a threat to some churches, and some ministers took it seriously, about not saying certain things. Now, as a minister, when you get to that point, you have to question who ordained you. And I don't mean on the human level. It's like my aunt said, the guy was out to see a freak out of one day, and he looked up and saw a GP in the sky, and he decided. That God was telling him to go preach. Well, he tried that and wasn't too successful. And when he came back home, he realized that what God had been telling him was go fly. <laughs> now we have to have, I think, a clearing out of some church, some ministries. Because we many people spoke about what's happening with Billy Graham. We get out there and you get to the point where, oh. I've got all these people depending on me. Oh, I've got all this money coming in. What would my supporters say if I ventured across the line and spoke the true feelings of my heart? But that's what you're supposed to do according to Isaiah 61. Yeah, you know, that was part of the problem. And that has been part of the problem in the past. Is that, you know, um, in some cases, particularly amongst white pastors, uh, they could be, their mouths could be shed simply because uh, they start talking about integration, or they talk about equality. Uh, these are subjects that they, their mouths could be closed on. Now, one of the, I think the great threat today amongst African American churches is not that they become, uh, not that they, they, they speak out against evil, but that they have become to prosperity ministry conscious. God wants you to be rich. God may not want you to be rich. You may not be rich uh, financially. That may not happen. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you cannot be effective uh, in what you do because it's not, this, this idea about Christianity and religion, it's not about what can I get, it's about what can I give. What can I do to help somebody else along the way? Not what how I'm going to get rich, but that's what I, in a lot of cases, what I see is not even hard thinking. Hard thinking is not there. It's just not there. If people, it just, it just doesn't happen all the time. See, it's not, not, you know, they don't, they don't study this, they kind of get a, a little snippet of something, and they run with it, and God wants to be rich, and that's, that's what happens. I don't think that that's what it's what we really intended. And we had a question. Yeah. Uh, I, I just I just feel that you know if we talk about racism in relationship to religion, mm -hmm. that we have to look at both sides of it from the perspective of that now you find that there are many African Americans that are choosing to leave the Baptist church, choosing to leave the African American Episcopal Church, and what all of that actually means when they go into where they are a minority. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess
this comes to, at that point, it's about uh, class. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I, I raised my level <coughs> at that point, and I'm now upper class or in, in my mind. Because what does it mean to be middle class? You know, what does that really mean? Does that mean when you are you, you are you middle class? The middle are you middle class when you make fifty thousand dollars or seventy five thousand dollars? I don't think that that's what that means. I think that the, the, the problem is going to listen a few more people when they understand the middle class is this is above that level of uh, income. Uh, but sometimes African Americans well, that's a lot of money, and they want to get away from what they understand to be. What I find to turn that way, get religion, or get away from what they think is beneath them.